We're going to cover a variety of things. We're going to talk about types of meditations. The types in terms of forms are those focus meditations, the things that we focus on as a task. And then we're going to talk about that sort of freer perspective where we're not attached to experiences, but we respond by just being more aware of our environment and our world. And somewhere in between there is where mindfulness fits. We're going to talk about some of the ones that come from various countries in the, in the East and how they develop, and some of the ones that we still use. We're going to talk about some of the research of the benefits of meditation. Um, and the, the newest research from Stanford and from Harvard and from a variety of places suggests that the brains change in terms of these patterns. And then hopefully we'll give you some ideas. If you're not a meditator, we hope you leave. Because I do believe this is the case. It, just as I ne needed meditation, I think all of us certainly benefit from learning this. So we're going to talk about, how, okay, so how can you develop this meditative process? And I love the research. If, if you want to look at some absolutely wonderful research, look at Dr. Davidson's research from the University of Wisconsin in the Wasteman Center. Dr. Lutz's as well. And they focus on how it literally changes your brain and strengthens those parts of your brain that allows you to feel what Dr. Brene Brown would call vulnerability in a more effective basis. So um, let's talk about Zen, speaking of Eastern, let's talk about Zen meditation. Of course, it became very popular in the 60s and 70s as well. Um, the Zen of things, basically it is what it is kind of models, and that's kind of what we're suggesting. Not thinking about anything is Zen. That's the comment that we typically see. Once you know this, walking, sitting, talking, all that Zen potentially, if we just are in the present of the experience. And uh, this is the, the uh, person who sort of brought uh, Buddha Dhamharma. Uh, Buddha Dhamharma brought this to uh, Zen teaching, uh, really to China, bringing Zen to China, and brought the whole notion of this perspective. And it really didn't do anything for about 200 years after his death, so he didn't reap the benefits of it, unfortunately. But he probably did because of his perspectives. And now many, many people are Zen Buddhists. I always think of this, and I'll do a translation for, for maybe more faith-based perspective. When I teach Zen uh, meditation to people, I talk about like centering prayer. The focus of listening is really what it is. And it is an active process of listening but it is not an active awareness process that I'm impacting my thoughts. And I can tell you, this is probably the hardest meditation to do because of our monkey brains. I mean, our brains just wander very quickly away from being aware of the moment and to be in that perspective. Um, and again, it might be my brain. That's why I'm saying it's always interesting when I'm teaching meditation to understand people's unique learning pattern, that what we want to do is find the area that approximates their learning style the best. If it's an active, for example, kids, it might be an active physical meditation where they do things when they're walking, walking meditations. Quieting the thoughts might be what we do. For some people, sitting quietly for over two minutes is a really battled, battled situation. Once we find those resonating meditative interventions, then we can begin to expand them. And the more we do, the healthier our brain patterns are. So that's kind of what Zen is, as simple as that. 